So today at Edison Motors, exciting day. It's actually Theron's first day here full time. He's going to be filming, so we should be able to get a lot more of these videos. But basically what we're doing today is getting those axles prepped and ready. These are the lower axle saddles. These are what the axle goes into. Walking beam attaches onto the end. These are inserts for the frame rail. As you can see, we have overly built that skookum. Um, and then today we will also do the rims and tires and get all that ready. Darren's gonna run to Kamloops, go grab the tires in his pickup. He's got a little short box, so he's gotta grab an entire semi-truck worth of tires in a short box. I'm sure he'll figure it out. He's smart. And then, yeah, that's, that's today. We're gonna prep up the axle, grind them up, get them ready for welding, get them put into position with the backhoe. Should be an exciting day overall. We're gonna bring these axles down to Cal Tire. We've ordered some rims, gonna make sure the rims fit then get them tires mounted up to the rims so that when we have this mounted to the truck we can put the tires on it. So because they got the planetary hubs on them we need special rims just because it it's a little bit bigger of a hub on here so yeah. So we had to order in special rims for it. There's a, pi a pallet of rims in there and we have the e-axles and we have never put them on and confirmed with our own eyes that they fit. We've just gone by the measurements. Yeah. So if they did not fit, we would have been far behind. Well, the thing is that these are these are standard rims for planetaries, but my big concern, I'm like, what if this is a different size planetary? What if the electric motor has a slightly different size planetary? Luckily, because it's a standard planetary, they had a ton in stock in Alberta, which uses a lot of winch tractors, planetaries. So they're just a normal planetary rim, and I am so happy about that. Ugh. So now that we have the rim confirmed, we have the pile of tires that are in the back of my pickup there that I picked up this morning. I have to say I'm impressed with my own uh, loading. Yeah, if, some nice stacking skills. If it fits, it ships. You didn't have any telegators on the way over. No, 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 everyone <laughs> stayed clear of me. And uh, so now we get to unload those tires and get them mounted on the rims. The one axle is being installed at the shop right now, and we kept one to bring to the tire store. Yeah, now we get this over to the boys in the shop. They can put this axle under the trailer. We can start mounting the hangers while these guys get the tires on, and hopefully in a week or two weeks, we'll have all of the truck will be rolling with its tires. So. Okay, I'll go back my pickup up, and we'll start unloading the tires here. Yeah. Okay. It's not, it's not even fucked up. Automotive manufacturing has one of the lowest WCV premiums. Believe it or not, this is considered one of the safest things you can do as far as industrial work goes. I say as I'm running a back hole indoors. what the axle are resting on. We got the pumpkin now resting on its own, so now we can bring the suspension saddle in here and make sure that it fits. Just cleaning up these areas so we can weld on the new hangers. We gotta have the, the lower hanger and it grabs the back, uh, grabs underneath the axle, ah, uh, this thing. This guy here sits under the axle, then you weld it onto the axle, so cleaning it up so we can get it on. How's that look? A little bit of play, but that's all right. Yeah. Okay. Well, they fit anyways. Yep. He made them just a little bit too big so that we could grind them out. He wanted them to make sure they were snug for us. A little too small, you mean? Yeah. That's a little right there. A little rough spot. I can. The shops the that thing. are. Well, no. The point is to see where it falls off, right? Yeah. The shops that are too cheap to afford bluing. <laughs> Where Chase is, looks like it's kind of clear. Oh yeah, yeah. Stick yours in. Okay, mine's in all the way. 
That's one in. Okay, push a little. Ah, oh, now I want to go on. Back a little, right? This one doesn't fit. Fuck sakes. It's so close. It's coming up square. Let, let's use the fessing clamp now and see if it'll... Just pry in? Yeah. Plate welded on the plate. It can change the angle a little bit. Yeah. So we might just need to grind a little off the inside. Oh, it is plate on plate. Okay, I thought this was bent. No. Have a look and see, Dad. I think it we're a fair ways out for squishing. What if we... Um, that little hydraulic power press, stick that in there, below it, push out on both sides till it's on. Did you release it? Nope. Not yet. Not yet. How are we at? A little sloppy. Yeah. Okay, so I'll release it. Uh, give her another couple. You remember how loose that one was? Oh yeah, and then it'll be tighter as you go down. Yeah, too. and then we can always clamp it closed too. Yeah. Okay. okay, lots of room now. Okay. How is it on the end? How is it on this end? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let her okay. calm down. See if it's still. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, good news. Okay, is... uh, push her in a little. We're just on an angle. Uh, good. Uh, it's higher than it was before. I'm bottomed out here. Okay, it, it's going in, so. Yeah, it's going in. Why is it okay, stopping now? Want... No. Because I'm bottomed out. I can't drop this to now pull it up any higher. Clamp, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now we can Bessie clamp it up. We need a uh, uh, box oh, and wrench up. for you. Yeah, I will need a wrench here eventually. But well, we don't know if we're centered or what. Because we may need to be a little left and a little right. So if we tighten it all the way in, it'll be a pain to knock it off. But if we just got it there, we know it's kind of right. Yeah, I'd leave the fine tuning at the end because you'll probably need some little yeah, minor adjustments. I think so. So if we put the saddle on, mm -hmm. bolt the saddle in, then tighten this up to the saddle. Cool. Okay, we're starting to move. You ready? Yeah. yeah. That's when we're lined up there. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. What are we against? This stupid fucking whale thing. No oh, man. Okay, well that's that's the next hindrance right there. You can set it. Okay, ready? Okay, yep. Oh! Ah. Watch your hands. Yeah. How's it pump? Yeah, we are hitting it. It's got to come up a little bit, but this guy's getting us stuck. We're above the pump now. Yeah, we are above the pump. But kick that uh, beam in. The beam looks hanging yep. us up. There we go. Nice. Yeah. We got to... Come on, Zach, just find a hole. I know, we got to... Over my way, just a little. Oh, we're almost oh. there. Oh, up, up, oh, up, yep, up. yep, yep. Kick it back in it. Not... Uh, I don't have a wrench on this side. Uh, uh, Theron, can you pass me a 50 16 wrench? Thank you. My hand is getting tired. Go for it. Who the fuck drilled these? We had this whole thing on. Yeah, this was hung before. Did we swap sides and maybe the one side's on a different side? No. On my side, yeah, we gotta go up a cunt here. Yeah, see that one? So this is on an angle here. Oh, oh, this would have been more compressed, so this would have been on an angle more similar to this. We're not getting caught on anything down the... You know what I mean? Because this one has gaps. So if this gap was closed, that one inch, that would bring this one inch, like it would rotate the whole thing and then move those bolts into line. Okay, so now we need to get the uh, the tool and do... And also, this out. can slide too. So that's a thing that can happen. It yeah, could just be slid yeah, all Yeah, see over. that one's... Yeah, yeah, this part here. So this whole low, this whole bottom assembly should be able to slide this way a little bit. Because this plate moves, right? Uh, undo the slack just a little bit. Humor me here, eh? Yeah, that's, this plate here moves so that you can adjust it. Yeah, yeah, keep her coming. Okay, that should do it. Well, it's going to need more than that a little bit. What if we brought this guy back, so we loosen it up, and then we pull it back with this hoist? Hey, if yeah. you could pry that, I can get a bolt in. Oh, that's in there. It's gonna go a little more. Yeah, I'm running out of pry. I hope. Oh, we're gonna lose it pretty soon here. Yeah, I, I think we gotta, we gotta, we gotta try a new plan. We need a, we need a. How better. close were we? Uh, oh, we're fucking millimeters close. Like, oh, right yeah. a millimeter. Yeah, and that is pulling it over. So Thanks. we need something a little bit thicker. 
mm -hmm. that we can get into what another we, hole. What if we took that and we just hammer it in? This guy. Oh, oh, I'm getting somewhere. <sighs> Mechanical persuasion. Nice. Teamwork. Chase just blitzkrieg these fucking bolts. That's pure, <laughs> pure will. Let's be honest, that's how this entire track has been built. Right. Uh, I need Here that. Right. Fuck yeah. Got her. We did the thing. We did a thing. Whoa. Successful and or not, we did the thing. Mainly 90%, 90% of the bolts lined up, so. Yep. Well, so what's wrong with that last one there? Nothing, 90% is an A. Kind of wrapping up for the day here. Guys are just heading home. Basically where we ended up is we got the one saddle on on the uh, driver's side. We got the axle on, brackets lined up. Well, not axle on, but we got the axle in place. And you'll notice that it looks backwards because your rear end of your differential and your pumpkin is facing the cap. The reason why we did it this way, number one, we don't have to relocate any air paw brakes. If this was disc brakes, it'd be easier. We're going disc brakes in the future. Hands down, disc brakes in the future so that the brake pots just come here because that would be a lot easier to work with. But the other reason is it protects the electric motor. There, there is some thought to this. It protects the electric motor, everything from having it. So when you're in the mud and muck, you don't have to worry about the plate. The front of the differential starts pushing through any kind of muck. It protects all your wiring on the back end here. And then with both of them, because this one's gonna face this way, this one's gonna face this way, your wires don't have to travel. With a walking beam suspension, it moves this. The closer you are to the center of that moving beam, the less it travels, so the less that our high voltage and our coolant lines have to travel. So that's kind of the logic in that, because there's gonna be one cross member rail right here, two torsion arms, run the lines up the side where the torsion arm goes, balances like that. So well, that's kind of the logic on this. It's kind of actually a smart way to do it. It's just basically one motor is going to be running full speed in reverse and the other one's going to be running full speed in forward. Cool thing about electric motors is that it'll, these motors will go in as fast in reverse as they go in forward. So technically this truck can do 140 in reverse. I think that's kind of cool. 